There was one scene that I handed to another animator because I was busy with, with my stack of stuff. It was a scene where uh, during Gaston's song and he turns around and his line goes and every last inch of me is covered with hair, right? He, he opens up his shirt and exposes his chest hair. So I gave this to this one animator and it came back as a pencil test and I just like, is that what his chest hair is going to look like? <laughs> because he drew it like sort of combed from the inside out, these waves of manicured carefully, maybe there was some mousse in it, you know. It was the strangest looking chest hair I'd ever seen. And I'm going like, I don't think we're going to do that. But then I opened it up to my crew. Well, what is it going to look like? Because should, should it be stubby, curly? What is it? And then everybody got a Xerox of that one drawing, right? And then everybody did their own version. And you have no idea. We had like 20, 25 different versions of chest hair. <laughs> but then it was up to me to decide, well, we're going to take maybe a little bit of this, a little bit of that. So it was like a mix of curls and stubs. But the first one was like, <laughs> it just looked strange. You know? <laughs> We started actually in Europe working on Beauty and the Beast. Glenn, myself, and a whole bunch of others. At that time, it was supposed to have a European flavor in the way the story was told and the look. So we hooked up with a European studio called The Purdoms. And uh, yeah, spent some time in London, but also in uh, France. Had a nice research trip through the Loire Valley, drank some French wine. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, a lot of the studies for The Beast, they ended up serving me for when later we actually did dive in and do it. Walking past the London Zoo every day, I'd see the wolves walking back and forth there. So he's got wolf legs and a wolf tail. I always wanted to be an artist. And it was during that time in London that I started to just keep a sketchbook and drawing everything everywhere I went. Sometimes these things they they fall into place rather quickly, and others, yeah, you're just you're just day in and day out, just making drawings, throwing them out, throwing them out until you you find that character. And then typically, what you end up with is a design that works from one angle. You go, ah, oh, that's great. And then as soon as they turn this way, it's like it doesn't look like him anymore, and yeah. you have to work for another couple months just to get that so it actually starts working in three dimensions. So it's really animating and moving in that you really discover the character. I wanted the presence of the beast in my room. So I found there was a taxidermy place close by and there was this big buffalo head. So I said, I, I want that buffalo head in my office. <laughs> I just surround myself with inspiring things that I don't even necessarily know why, but I feel like I need it. <laughs>